Energy is expressed through moving, laughing, shaking, crying, screaming, singing, dancing. The expenditure of that energy is the signal to the body that it can release the defense system. The first breathwork session, I released a lot of rage and anger. I shouted so much that I, I burned my throat. I've been a body worker for 10 years, and I, I've always known from a cognitive level that trauma is stored in the body. But after this weekend, I know it on a visceral level and a firsthand level. And cognitively, I've made peace with my past. I've been living in a human suit, and breathwork has helped bring out me again. To liberate the psyche, to be free, to create beautiful stories, we must first heal the soma. You know, I have a lot of people that have come to me that are just like, I can't stop these limited thoughts. I can't stop this limited thinking. How many of you have heard the term limited thinking before? And have probably maybe gone to a coach or a therapist or like, I can't stop these troublesome thoughts. Well, no one wakes up in the morning and decides, I'm just gonna think limited today. Most of the time, those limited thoughts are coming from a system that is stuck in a contracted state. Most people wanna think expansively, but it's really hard to think expansively if your body is stuck in a contracted state, if you're stuck in a state of fear, guilt, shame. If your body's in a contracted state, you're probably gonna be picking up on contracted ideas. It's probably gonna be very hard for you to think clearly. And if you look back at history, uh, the people, the institutions, governments understand this very well, is that if I can keep people in a contracted state, well, then they're not gonna think clearly. If I can keep people in a state of fear, guilt, and shame, well, what's gonna happen is they're gonna make predictable moves. They're not gonna be able to think expansively. And the example that I always use is, they're probably gonna run to the store and buy all the toilet paper. Like that has anything to do with your actual physical survival whatsoever. People do uh, wild things when they get stuck in this animalistic state. You can't think clearly. And so to clear on a somatic, to become clear on a somatic level, clear to become clear mentally. To understand how this process takes place, we first need to reconnect and understand how we naturally try to discharge these defense systems. How do we move these defense systems through our body? How do we break free from these contracted states? Because our body knows how to do it. We've had these processes weeded out of our culture. How do humans naturally move through these defense responses? How do we deactivate and discharge these states of fight or flight? Well, stress is pressure. If I were to put stress on Jeremy, I usually do this to fish, but I don't know where he's at. If I were to put stress on Jeremy, I'm putting pressure on him. All, we live in a world with these chronic stressors, all these pressures put on us. How do humans release stress? We have to find ways to release the pressure. We have to find ways to express. We are expression vessels. Some of the most stressed out people have found incredible ways to channel that stress into different forms of expression. Probably the music that you love, the art that you love, the businesses that have helped you, were probably created by some pretty stressed out people that found a way to channel that pressure into a different form of expression. And so how do we move things through our systems? We find ways to express. And at first, those expressions happen on an instinctual and an emotional level. And then eventually, over time, we learn how to create those expressions into an art form. First, we have to find out how to move that pressure through us somatically. And so completing the behaviors that were instinctually demanded in the presence of the stressor is the indicator to your nervous system that you're not in the presence of the stress anymore. You're not in the presence of this threat anymore. And it sends a signal to your nervous system that you can relax. The absence of these discharges or expressions are a signal to our being that the threat has not been solved. And this instinctual defense response stays activated. These can stay activated for weeks, months, years, and begin the symptomatic process. Energy is expressed through moving, laughing, shaking, crying, screaming, singing, dancing. The expenditure of that energy is the signal to the body that it can release the defense system. 
and we'll talk about why breath work actually causes that. But I'll give you an example. You can look at children. And one of my favorite quotes in the Bible is that unless you become as a little child, you may not enter the kingdom of heaven. And what are they saying? A child ha is, is pure, doesn't have all of these defense systems and these societal impressions that have cut off our expression. But when a child goes through something stressful, he starts immediately throwing a temper tantrum. He moves it, they move it through their body. They know, probably not cognitively, but their body knows that they don't want to harbor it. That if I move it through, then I'm not, then I'm not going to suppress it. And it's not going to bottle up. And so the, 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 the discharging of these defense systems when we allow ourselves to feel, when we allow an emotion to come through us, when we complete the necessary action that we needed to do in the presence of a stressor, it sends a signal to our nervous system that we're not in the presence of that stressor anymore and that we can actually relax and go back to our life. How many of you have been taught to suck it up, suppress, don't feel, don't show emotion, don't be weak? We've all, I don't know where it came from. I'm sure we can find it if we go back far enough. But we've been taught that. And so when we go through something stressful, a lot of us just we suck it up, we're tough. And then maybe we work through the story of whatever happened in our head. We work through it. But that doesn't mean that your body is still not in the presence of a tiger. You can process it all you want in your head, the story and deal with it, but that does not mean that your body doesn't feel like the, the threat has been resolved until you al al allow on an instinctual level your body to complete the necessary action it needed to do, whether that's shaking, whether that's running, whether that's yelling out, no, maybe you needed to tell someone no, and they kept going. Completing the necessary action that you needed to do in the moment on a physical level, on an emotional level, maybe something happened and you had like an immense amount of anger that wanted to come up and you just pushed it down. It's not safe to actually feel anger. And so the body still feels that it's in that state. And so the discharging process is moving, is moving that through. is to clear on a somatic level so we can become clear mentally. My biggest gem I think comes from the first breathwork session. I released a lot of rage and anger. I shouted so much that I, I burned my throat. And so the next uh, breathwork session yesterday, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go in and breathe. Like, don't try to show, perform anger, like just breathe. There's just like so much joy, crying, feeling that was way deeper underneath all that anger. And to have everyone come around and give those little nudges to, it's okay to feel. My partner to like, give me that sense of safety and love in that moment and the whole in that space. The somatic community, so powerful. I've been a body worker for 10 years and I've always known from a cognitive level that trauma is stored in the body. But after this weekend, I know it on a visceral level and a first-hand level. And cognitively, I have made peace with my past, but I'm also learning that viscerally, I have not made peace with my past. And um, I want to thank you, Stephen. I followed you for a while, and I remember the first time I came across you, I was like, here's a guy who might know something about body work. And to watch you slowly start this from the beginning, and I know there's probably a lot of resistance, I think everybody in here is grateful that you and the team took the chance and the courage to follow that dream, so thank you. You know, my first breathwork session, Kelly told me that I've been living in a human suit and just kind of living and just going through the motions um, and breathwork has helped bring out me again and get me out of just the going through the motions of life, so thank you. If you want to experience the power of somatic breathwork, we would love to see you at one of our community sessions. You can click the link below to figure out when our next session is, and we'd love to see you there. This experience, I truly believe, could literally and will literally change the world.